Just watching news desk on journeys. Now, maternal deaths keep increasing in the Upper West region. Here's a report by Rafik Salam. The annual performance review meeting organized by the One Municipal Health Directorate offers stakeholders in the health sector unique opportunity to discuss, exchange views, ideas, share achievements, and outline future directions in addressing the sector's critical issues. One Municipal Director of Health, Beatrice Pumfa, using the review meeting as a strong song before she retired from public service, stated that they have significantly improved service delivery, especially maternal and child health services. She added that they have successfully implemented the aforementioned programs to ensure safe motherhood and child survival, reduction of child mobility and child mortality, and also provided outreach services to vulnerable groups. Madame Kumfa noted that even though maternal deaths in the municipality have reduced from 9 in 2015 to 8 in 2016, it is still unacceptable. Any maternal death, one too many, no matter how great the statistics look, the still rates are still high in the municipality. Some immunization coverages have dropped marginally, such as Rota 2 and TT2. Maternal deaths, even though has reduced for a period under review, but is still unacceptably high. These are partly attributable to inadequate critical care staff, physician assistants, registered general nurses, record and lab assistants. At a similar review meeting held at Wuchao in the Wawa district, Wawa district director of health, Basilia Salia, also expressed concern over the number of maternal deaths in the district and the delay in the payment of claims to health facilities by the NHIA. We are over 90% registered with health insurance. How accessible is it? We have challenges with it, but I think we all know, the media they know that uh, the health insurance we are having challenges because over 11 months we don't have payment, yet the services must work. How, should they, how can the services work well? Yes, the services, we are doing our best. But when you don't have money to get the logistics for the services, it's not the best. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. And let's stay in the northern parts of the country and the production of share nuts is providing some jobs for women in the northern region. Here's a report for you. In northern Ghana, share butter making is big business, not least because it is the biggest employer for women here. I met these women in Wulugu, more than 70 kilometers north of the northern regional capital, Tamale. Many times it's been referred to as the cocoa of northern Ghana. Estimates say more than a million women are involved in the production of shea butter for a livelihood. But for years, there's been barely any sustainable investment into this venture. Many women still go through such crude methods like this to produce the butter. But now they face an even daunting challenge. Climate change threatens even the availability of the nuts with which they use to produce the butter. Alice Dawuni has been in this business all her life. Now, for her and the several women involved in this, finding the sheer nuts for their work is getting increasingly tough. These days, we can't even get the nuts to prepare the butter. Now we have to go deep into the villages to find the sheer nuts. The trees have all been cut down. The share tree takes time to mature and produce nuts. But because all of them are being cut for four weeks, we don't have the trees to produce the nuts. Deforestation has now reached alarming levels, especially in Ghana's savannah belt. And as the very important share trees are being brought down, so are the livelihoods of the several thousands of women that depend on the trade. Rabia to Abu Bakari works with more than 600 women just outside Tamale to produce shea 
and buys them off for export. When you go to Bolga Road, it, was, it is more than 10 acres land. They take off all the Shena's tree and planted the mango tree. I saw it in my eyes. And in fact, when this Arabian Kia was taking that Shena's firewood, there were more than 10 trees. Northern Ghana already accounts for some of the country's poorest, with at least 1.3 million of the most vulnerable living in northern region alone. Any development that threatens already existing economic activity could only worsen the situation. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Tamale. Now, Dr. Kwekwe Friye is Western Regional Minister Designate. Simon Ose Mensa is the Shanti Regional Minister Designate. Eric Kwache Dafo is Eastern Regional Minister Designate. And Ishmael Ashite is Greater Accra Regional Minister Designate. All four will be quizzed by the Appointments Committee of Parliament today for their respective portfolios. Joseph Opokugako is live in Parliament and joins us. Joseph, what do you have for us? Hello, Joseph. Well, uh, Beatrice, good, good morning to you. Um, so, yes, uh, any moment from now, the vetting session will be beginning here in Parliament. Um, what I can tell you is that at the moment, there are a lot of sheep from the real area that you already mentioned. People who've come around to back Dr. Kweku, a free year who will be the health minister designated to be vetted. Uh, some of that chiefs from the Ashanti region area coming to back, um, Simon Asemenza, who is the Ashanti regional minister designate, and a number of other dignitaries who have gathered here. I've also seen some members of parliament from the region. Uh, for example, I've seen um, Kobna Mita Kando, who is the MP for the Jabobu area. He's also one of those who's taking their seats here as the citizens of the appointment committee of parliament. It's expected that um, any moment from now, the chairman of the committee, as well as other members of the committee would be coming in, and then we expect the vetting session to begin in the moment from now. Joseph, based on what you're saying, does it mean that uh, Dr. Fie is likely to start? Exactly the case. So um, he would be the one that the entire session will begin with. From there, the um, Ashanti Regional Minister designates um, Simon Assemens who would be taking his seat. And then Ishmael Ashiti, the Greater Accra Regional Minister, would be the next person. And then the final person would be the Eastern Regional Minister Designate. Um, it's likely that the processes are likely to run very late into the evening or other things being equal. On previous days when vetting have been done, they vet like uh, three people on each day. But looks like in the effort to speed up the whole process, uh, four of the Regional Minister Designates are the ones who have been vetted today. And Opoku, I know usually you have family members of these ministers designate uh, appearing, also trying to give support to their, their people who are going to be vetted. Are they there today? Uh, that's exactly the case today as well. Uh, a number of chiefs, um, they've come around uh, with their subjects, uh, fully clad in their regalia with um, their traditional clothing and also their jewelry. I can tell you that. Um, although as I speak to you, when it comes to the appointment committee itself, none of the members are in yet. The room is virtually full. It's actually full, uh, filled with supporters of uh, the various candidates and also traditional leaders who come from where they hail from to come support them as they go through the vetting process. Today. And of course, talking about traditional leaders and the dignitaries who are there, I'm wondering what have they been telling you? Well, they, they are all expressing confidence that um, their candidates will be able to steal through. Uh, a lot of them are of the opinion that this is someone who is their son, who is managed to uh, rise to the level of being considered for the position of regional minister when it comes to um, the various ministries. And so um, they're confident that the whole vetting process will steal through smoothly. And they have very high expectations that when they take over as regional ministers, them being the major contact people, when you look at the traditional level and also central government, they'll be able to deliver and help bring some level of development to this area. Thank you very much, Joseph Opoku Gapo, reporting live from Parliament. When we come back very shortly, we'll bring you the latest in the world of business and other stories. Don't go away.